Okay, so this is an M1 MacBook Air from 2020 and I've managed to get RetroPie working on it and it works really well. So first of all, I'm gonna launch UTM, which is a virtual machine program for a Mac. And this is a way of emulating all sorts of software on a Mac. So you can see we can install all sorts of Linux, but uh, also we can install Windows XP, 7, 10, 11, Ubuntu, and so on. But I'm just gonna use Debian 11, which is this image here, which I've already installed. So let's go back to it and just launch at the top here. And launch Debian. And if I plug in my controller, you see that it recognizes it and we hit confirm to allow it within this virtual machine. Now if I launch Linux, I can type in emulation station and it starts up. And you can see I've got some systems in here already. If I get my controller, I can skip through. Uh, all the RetroPie menus and everything work exactly as they would do. So RetroPie setup. And this gives us the option of installing various different packages. I've installed a few different packages, um, but uh, I've kept it pretty basic for now because I've only just done it. But if I go exit, that will take us back. And we can navigate to a system. So say, for instance, Sega Saturn. In fact, what I need to do is enable the audio because it always starts up with no audio for some reason. Let's go up here uh, and Sega Rally. Let's just launch that. And this works really well on this system. There we go. So all the controller buttons are configured and everything. And we can go outside of the car. I prefer it. Oh, let's accelerate. And you can see it's working fine. The sound is perfect. It's nice and fast, nice and responsive. Oh, that wasn't good. Oh dear. When you lose it, you really lose it on this game. So anyway, you can see that's working absolutely fine. Let's just quit out of that and try a different system. So Super Nintendo, we've got Sunset Riders on here. These are obviously very old systems, but uh, I've already shown original Xbox, PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 2 and Nintendo Switch on the M1 Mac. But this is about getting all the old systems together. Uh, I haven't tried arcade, but a lot of the arcade systems are going to work absolutely fine. So you can see it's not struggling at all. Oh. So let's quit out of that and try something else. So Game Boy Advance and a bit of WarioWare. And these are loads of mini games, really, really simple, but very, very playable. Okay, let's try something else. So what else have we got? MS-DOS. Uh, actually, I've got, so Carmageddon works, but uh, there's something wrong with, which one is it? This one launches it. There's something wrong with the graphics and uh, it, it's annoying because it does actually work fine. So maybe I try one of the other DOS emulators to see if it works better on that. But if I just go new game, you can see the graphics are a bit weird. Let's just show that it does actually work. Although I'm not sure what button is accelerate, but the other cars will push me around so you'll be able to see it working. This was a really hard to run game at the time. You can see I can zoom in and zoom out. But uh, yeah, I don't know what accelerate is. I've tried loads of buttons. Oh, that's going to make it bigger. Oh, only to there though. Yeah, really weird. Don't know, don't know what button it is for accelerate. But anyway, let's quit out of that. As it's DOS, I think I have to use the keyboard to quit out. So PlayStation Destruction Derby 2. I haven't put a BIOS file in here, but it does work fine. So let's just go straight into a race. Uh, the Stadia controller was the only controller that I could get to work. So I tried an Xbox 360 controller. Uh, tried an Xbox One controller and none of them were detected but this works absolutely fine and sets up with RetroPie just as a normal joypad does but as you can see oh dear oh dear the speed is absolutely fine it's definitely working as it should be so yeah really pleased with that it's a great game See if we can do one jump without uh, without losing it. There we go. Nice. 
Okay, let's quit out of that. And I think that's probably all the systems I've got on there. Yeah, so let's exit from it. So all of that works exactly as it does on a Raspberry Pi. So we can quit emulation station and that will take us back to the desktop. And this system works really well. Debian, Debian works great on here. I've got a, a web browser and everything and uh, it just feels like it's native. You know, if I do BBC Sport, you can see that the web browser is nice and snappy, full screen. Let's just go straight into it and it loads up incredibly well considering this is in a virtual machine. So I can go straight back to my MacBook and then I can drop back into UTM and uh, yeah, it, it works incredibly well. I've done other videos on this running Windows and Ubuntu and Mac OS on this same MacBook on multiple screens and it works really well. So let's show you how to do it. So let's shut this down and quit out of this. Okay, so if my Mac looks a little different, it's just because it's been updated overnight. So let's go to the web browser and do a search for UTM and M1. This should work on all the M series Macs just the same. Uh, so click on UTM and you can see you can download it in the normal way for free or you can go to the Mac App Store, which you do pay for, but it does get regular updates, which I really like. So once you've downloaded it and installed that, launch it and you'll get this, Browse UTM Gallery. Now, I was using Debian 11 LXDE. There's no reason it shouldn't work with some of these others, uh, the Linux distributions, but make sure it's an ARM-based one because M1 Macs run on ARM, so the performance will be better. But if we click on this, you'll see that it only needs a gigabyte of memory, which is really good, and it also doesn't take up loads of space. So username Debian, password Debian, remember that. So open in UTM and that will automatically download it as a virtual machine. So I think I only get this message because I've got exactly the same operating system installed twice, but just hit OK, close down UTM, and then open it up again, and you can see that it's appeared. So this is the one I've just installed, and this is the one I've already had installed. You can see it's much bigger, and uh, I can see that I've installed KDE Plasma, which is a different desktop environment. So if I go to this one, I could right click on it and edit it. So let's call it Debian RetroPie test, I'm gonna call it, because I'm gonna delete it and keep the other one. So let's hit save and let's launch that one. So we can go full screen and we can just hit enter. And remember that it was Debian and Debian. So let's hit login. Now I'm never going to remember that, so what I'm going to do is change the password. So we go into LX terminal and type in sudo p a s w d. So let's type in the current password, which is Debian, and then the new password, and again. Okay, so now I've got a new password on it. I don't mind that it's called Debian. Now let's do an update, sudo apt update, and sudo apt upgrade, and yes. Let's press Q to quit, and that will finish off the update. Okay, that's all done. Let's try the web browser. Okay, so the browser doesn't work as standard. Okay, Synaptic Package Manager comes up under Preferences. Let's put that new password in. Let's close that down. And on here, let's go to Search, and let's do a search for Firefox. This one here, Firefox ESR, Mark for Installation, and Mark, and Apply, and Apply. Okay, that should be installed and working now. So let's close this down and have a look and see. Yeah, Firefox ESR. Perfect. So now if we type it, well, let's close this down. So now if we type in RetroPie Setup GitHub. Uh, so if we click on this one, and there's some things to copy and paste here. So you can see here, I've already done this bit. Let's install git. So 
So copy that, go back to the terminal and paste that in. And yes. By the way, once all this is done, you don't have to do all these steps again. It's just installed as an operating system, works really easily. Right, so that bit's done. Let's go to this one and copy it and paste that in. And then the next bit, which is this one, so let's just do the two together and paste that in. And that will set up and install RetroPie into this Linux operating system. So we'll come back when that's all done. And you get to this part, just press OK. And for the purpose of this, I'm just going to do a basic install. So hit enter again. And yes. And again, just let it do its thing. OK, so that's finished. So the only controller I got to work with was a Stadia controller. I did try an Xbox One and an Xbox 360 controller, but the Stadia one works for me. You might find other controllers work, so let's plug that in USB. I've got a little dock plugged in just because it's easier for me to have it powered and have normal USB sockets. So let's plug in my controller. And you can see it comes up USB device, so we're going to say confirm and allow. And now we go down to perform reboot and yes. And hopefully it will pick up my controller when it restarts. So start Linux in the normal way and log in. Now we can open a terminal and type in emulation station and hit return and it boots up and it wants to detect my controller now. So I'm going to press a button and you can see I can set it up in the normal way. So up, down, left, right. OK, so that's done. And for the hotkey, I chose this one and these two for start and select. So let's press the A button to go back out of that. You can see I've got no games on here at the moment. So let's add some games. I'm going to press start and I'm going to shut this down. And just quit emulation station. And yes, that takes us back to here. Now we need some games. I've got a load of games on this SD card, which is in a little USB reader. So I'm going to plug that in. There we go. And you can see USB device confirm and allow. Don't worry that it says disk not ejected. So you can see Linux has detected it. So I'm going to say, OK, I can close down this terminal for now. And I'm just going to find the ROMs that are on here. And now mine are in a folder. So I'm just going to navigate to a ROM and just find, I'm going to go Mega Drive because I didn't put Mega Drive on there before. So it's called Genesis on this. And let's go for Power Drive. So let's copy that and you can put it anywhere you like. I'm just going to put it on the desktop for now. So then if I close this down, there you go. So there's my one game. I'm now going to eject the USB stick. So let's go to the file manager and eject it and take that out because I got confused before. So let's close this down, open the terminal again and type in sudo pcmanfm and put your password in. And this gives us root access to these folders. Without it, you're not going to be able to copy this into the RetroPie folder. Now from here, we want to go to home and go up one and then go home, Debian and RetroPie and ROMs. And you can see here, there's various different systems in here. There's going to be a Genesis or a Mega Drive. There you go, Genesis. So let's copy that into that folder. Why was that the only one with a shortcut? Is it because it shortcuts to Mega Drive? It might do. Yeah, because the Genesis is Mega Drive. OK, well, we'll see what happens with it in Genesis, but you could probably put it in either folder. So now let's close that down and go back to the terminal. And we're going to launch Emulation Station. If you just press the up arrow, it will come up with your previous commands. There you go, Emulation Station. Let's hit Enter. And Mega Drive has shown up. So now with my controller, you can see I can switch between RetroPie, this is all the setup and everything, uh, all of this, or I can go back to Mega Drive. So if I hit B, that will launch Mega Drive. It will show the game that I've just added. And obviously, you can add all sorts of systems in here. There you go. And that's started up. 
So if I press select start and home, that will take me back. And if I want to add more systems, I can go to RetroPy and RetroPy Setup because I added Sega Saturn before, pop your password in. And uh, yeah, if we go to Manage Packages, there's all sorts of things in here. So it does most of Core and Main by a standard install. But if we go to Optional, you can see there's various different things. So if I wanted, uh, this is a Arcade Emulator Advanced Main, I can do that and I can install and yes, and it'll install that package and it will also add an extra folder in that list of ROMs folders. And I've got three quite detailed videos on RetroPie. If you want to know more about setup and theming and adding ROMs and various different things like that, have a look at these videos. They are on a Raspberry Pi, but the principle is the same. Okay, and if I go to back and then back again and back again and perform reboot, then that new system will be added. So by default, the systems that are already installed, if we go to the file manager here uh, and go home, back, Debian, RetroPie and ROMs are all these here. So let's get that a bit bigger. So ZX Spectrum, Arcade, Atari, Atari Lynx, Game Gear, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Genesis, more Arcade, Mega Drive, N64, PlayStation. So as I say, if you want to add more systems, just add them in that way and add the ROMs in the right folder. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.